If you ever ask yourself what the EWM best practices are or how to access those best practices, then this video here is the perfect one for you. I promise to keep it short and comprehensive and I also promise to share with you my personal accelerator for accessing those best practices. My name is Dil Hendrik and welcome back to a new video on my channel. As mentioned before, I will talk about what the best practices are, so that would be the first part of this video. In the second part, I will show you how to get access to them, how to configure them, and that will also cover the shortcut that I mentioned in the introduction already. So to break it down to its core and describe it in a simple way, I think we can say that the best practices, not only the EWM best practices, but also best practices in other areas of SAP's system are uh, pre-configured processes that are making use of the standard functionalities. And that does not mean that they cover all of the standard functionalities, they are not by far, but as it, it is a proven and working functionality and you can use this functionality to for example, prototype and build your project specific processes around those standardized processes. Or for example, you can use it for training uh, to get a first access into the world of the given module here, the world of EWM to understand one of multiple different possible processes and functionalities in a uh, already described and visualized way. Now this is what I'm going to show you now. Uh, those best practices come in the form of scope items and those scope items again come along with a process description and a detailed flowchart and a very detailed test script. So what you can see here is one of those scope items and so this is a inbound process. This is the short form of the scope item, 1FS in this case, and you can see that there is a, a diagram coming along with this process. This is visible here embedded in the browser in the process navigator, but you can also download it as a PDF and based on that, for example, do some trainings or walk through some prototyping workshop. Now, better, better for a workshop, uh, not as, as good for training, but if you want to really touch the system, go through the processes, you can check the accelerators, which cover also the test script. And this is actually a very comprehensive one. So just uh, looking at one example here, this is really a comprehensive test instruction. And that takes you along the whole process, including a detailed description of the precondition, like the master data that you need to execute this process. So what you saw now was just one of many scope items in this example for SAP WM. I will show you now really quick how to get the overview about all scope items so that you can make yourself familiar with the different ones. I will give you the link that you uh, need to start the process navigator. You will obviously need an S user to log into me.sap.com before you can access the process navigator. And then you scroll down through the list of solution uh, scenarios and what you need to use to get access to the EWM stuff is here SAP best practices for S4 HANA Cloud uh, private edition, uh, even though they're not using a cloud system, that doesn't matter. Then you select the version that you are working on. I'm not going to detail now into older versions. So let's say we are running 2023. That would be opening now. And then you go down here on the left under supply chain, you find warehousing somewhere. Here you go. And here you have the list of scope items. Now there are some that are prefixed with decentralized EWM that is uh, also possible to use those 
and an embedded EWM with just some very minor differences, but they're also available over there. And apart from that, you'll find everything here from inbound to outbound over internal processes and so on. Before we proceed, just a quick reminder that this channel lives from you subscribing and of course hitting the like button. So please do that real quick before we proceed with the next point. Thanks a lot and back to Hendrik. One thing I'm pretty sure you've asked yourself already is where the difference between the best practices and other approaches from SAP to deliver pre-configured content are actually. You might remember if you are a little bit longer working in this area already, the rapid deployment solution, uh, RDS, which was another approach or attempt by the SAP back in the days to deliver such content. This is discontinued in the meantime, uh, so there's no need to talk about this here. There is, however, another option, and this is the fully activated appliance. And this is a, a full-fledged system image that you can either uh, deploy in the cloud or download to your on-premise machine. And this gives you the option to install the whole package of best practices for all different modules into your system. Uh, so if you're really trying to set up an end-to-end -end flow, uh, including everything that the SAP has on the shelf for best practices for all the modules, then you can make use of this approach. But this is, as I said, a whole system. I will come to the details about how to configure and install that stuff. The best practices is rather the option when you want to pick uh, specific um, items from the scope. But in general, when your objective is to do some prototyping or to do some training, then those two are the options that you have. Fully activated appliance or best practice scope items. And I will now show you how you actually get access to that, how you can uh, configure that in your system, how you can install the two different uh, packages or offerings here. To start with the fully activated appliance, as I said, this is a full system image. So you either load it into your on premise system and then you have everything that is contained in this package. Uh, but that means that your system needs to be empty or what you had before would be gone afterwards. You also have the option to have that loaded into an account of your hyperscaler that you are using. For example, you can give them your Azure or AWS account and SAP will install it then in the cloud and then your hyperscaler will charge you around three to five dollar per hour where the system is up and running. So you will probably end up around one K dollar per month if you have that system running roughly 10 hours per day. And that will uh, be for free for 30 days. And then afterwards you need your ZAP CAL, so the Cloud Appliance Library License. And I think this is around another $700 per month. It's not very transparent, to be honest, where the current pricing is sitting. But I would guess for a fully activated appliance to have it running in the cloud, you would pay uh, something between 1.5 and 2K dollar per month. The installation as such is something that I will not describe in detail. There is an excellent blog by Jörg Wolf. And this blog also has lots of other graphics, a lot of information about the fully activated appliance and everything around. I will put the link into the video description. Shout out to Jörg. Thanks for writing that up for us. For the best practices on the other side, uh, so the installation of specific scope items from the EWM best practice processes, I will start with a high level overview here with the first step that you need to do when you want to have that installed on your on-premise system. Uh, so this is the creation of a new client. Uh, so you want to have a dedicated client for your SAP best practices, where you can then do the prototyping and the training. And then you need to browse through the OSS, find the node which contains the best practice content and package for your system. I'll also put the note into the blog and the video description. And from this note, you can then download 
the files, so the data and the co-files that you also have when you're, for example, importing, exporting transports. And you uh, save that on your application server and import this then in step four into uh, your system via the STMS. And then you have the downloaded transport files in your system. And then you run transaction SMB BBI. And with this transaction, you can then import the solution content and the installation data. And there you can also de-scope items from the best practice list. So if you don't want to install everything, then in this step, you can de-scope stuff. And the last step would then be the activation of the solution and the demo data, and that completes the implementation. This is just a very high level overview and it sounds very simple, but I promise you it is not. I decided not to go into detail here, but I will give you a link in the video description for a very, very comprehensive blog, which describes every single step of the process. A big shout out here to Hanuma and Mahesh who did this very comprehensive write up and uh, I promise you it will be useful for you. I will put the link in the description and in the blog post. Having said that, this is not straightforward. And if you do that on your in-house on-premise system, you need somebody with basis knowledge. And even if this person has a lot of basis knowledge, I promise you there are some hurdles on the way and it will take this person at least one to two days to have that up and running, to have the first scope items in your EWM system. And this is exactly where the shortcut comes into the game, the one that I mentioned in the introduction of this video. And with this shortcut, I promise you that you can reduce this waiting time to less than 10 minutes to get access to the EWM best practices. And this is possible via the services from IDES 24. I am collaborating with IDES 24 uh, I'm saying that straight out right away, but I would not recommend their hosting services here if I would not have tested it before and if I would not be convinced that it would save you time and money in the future. IDS24 is a service provider where you can get quick and easy access to SAP cloud systems. You just need to go to their website, select the system version that you need, and you will receive an email with the credentials and can log into the system right away. So just a quick look into how that looks like. Yeah, IDES24.de, yeah, the starting page, you can right away if you are a freelancer, for example, here use this option to get into the section with the system selection. And then you have the option to choose between an access with or without developer key. Let's assume for now you don't need that. Uh, you choose uh, the option here that you prefer and you are right away in the shopping cart and you can place and finish your order. You also have a 10 day money back guarantee if you're not satisfied. You proceed with the checkout and a couple of minutes later you will get an email with a subscription confirmation. As you see here, I tested that for you. You get a sub user and an initial password. You get a sub connection that you can, if you want, add to your sub logon. Or if you don't have the sub logon installed, you can just use this URL to access the system via the browser. Now, this is pretty easy pretty straightforward and takes you only a couple of minutes. So if you think you need a system for a couple of months only or for half a year, for a year, and you don't want to take the effort to install it on your on-premise system, then this is a pretty easy way. This comes as a fully activated appliance. I explained to you a couple of minutes ago what the FAA is. So that means you do not only have access to the EWM best practices, but also to the best practices of all other S4HANA modules. So I think you heard that I really think that this is a great option for consultants, for trainers, for students, for everybody who wants to get quick access to the best practices without having to wrestle with the configuration and the installation. And if you want to save some money by ordering that stuff, plus support this channel here at the same time, then just send me an email at contact at wmexperts.online and I will respond with a voucher that gives you 10% off your order at IDES24. 
Yeah, this closes this short video about what the EWM best practices are and how you can get access to them. I try to answer all those questions that I had in mind in the past and try to squeeze those into this, let's say, uh, rather short video. I will give you a list of useful links, useful notes and stuff like that in the video description and you will also find it on my blog on the corresponding post about this video. I'm working on a second one also related to the best practices. Uh, I came up with a kind of uh, learning method I would say that I would like to share with you and I'm convinced that you can make use of this learning method to leverage the best practices in order to experience a very sticky learning experience about the EWM standard functionalities. I will publish this video soon. Uh, I would suggest you subscribe to the channel so that you cannot miss it. And I would be very happy to see you again next time on this channel with the next video. Thanks for watching and happy learning.